Well, 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 hello everyone. My name is George Foy and welcome to Mafia 2. Now I know being a small YouTuber, a lot of you may be unfamiliar with me and my channel. So in an effort to make you feel more comfortable, I'm now going to get out my balls and slam them on my desk for you. Did you hear that? No? Okay, well now that we've established that I have small balls, let's continue with the video. In Mafia 2, you play as Vito, a man born in Sicily, whose family then moved to America when he was about eight years old, to the shiny state of New York City, or Empire Bay as they call it in the game. His father wanted to achieve the so-called American dream, but according to Vito, he spent most of the family's money on alcohol for himself and didn't even share it with his eight-year-old son. God, what a terrible dad. His dad also proved pretty useless at this whole American dream thing when he moved them into a neighborhood full of Italian people so Vito and his sister couldn't learn any English. Man, this guy really has proven to be a pretty bad parent. On top of the whole not letting your underage and impressionable eight-year-old son drink alcohol, I would really put him up there as one of the worst parents of the year. This led to Vito having to go out on the streets and find himself some friends, which I really admire as that's something that I couldn't do myself, being a complete introvert. He ended up becoming best friends with Joe, a guy who looked like the chocolate cake kid from the film Matilda. And no, not because he's overweight. You know I wouldn't judge someone like that in the year of 2020. I know what the consequences are. I'm a completely strict, gender-neutral, unidentifying helicopter myself. I know what it's like to be offended. It's clearly the eyes that really make them look kind of related. While getting up to some mischief with Joe, breaking into a jewellery store, we then got found out by a police officer who did what every normal American police officer would ever do in this situation and threatened to shoot me. With it being the 40s and them not being as many small minorities in America, me being an Italian, I was the small minority in this situation so I had to abide by the rules, and instead of a prison sentence they sent me back to my home country of Sicily, no not because I was getting deported, because I had to fight in World War 2. Fighting in the war proved a little bit tricky at first, take the shot, alright. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't take a shot like this. Hang on, sensitivity. And just like magic, turning down my sensitivity worked, and all of a sudden I was rolling every single one of them. I mean, I don't know why it took our ancestors so many years to fight this war. All they had to do was turn down their sensitivity, and everything would have been sound. Vito then showed us qualities to those similar of True Geordie, as he got his chest absolutely pumped full of lead, but got up, dusted it off, and continued to carry on like nothing happened. I mean, that is, of course, if you exchange the word lead for female feces. Once we had entered the building, I threw a grenade, which somehow teleported us to Australia. And once we were back in Sicily, I was greeted with a hostage situation, saving both of the hostages, and then continuing to see if I could then kill them. Unfortunately, I couldn't, but someone on the other side of the door did the job for me anyway. Now, being a pacifist in the war is a little bit like being a straight man locked in a room with James Charles. You're absolutely beading sweat, but you go along with it because you hope for some sort of cash sum or small reward at the end of it all. Anyway, back to me being a pacifist, I saw this guy burst out of the room who I could have shot in the face, but I decided to leave him alone as he had the cutest of smiles. He pushes my buddy over the balcony, I look down at my buddy and send some hashtag thoughts and prayers because that does a lot for someone that's already dead. But before I can even get in to say hi, how are you, my fellow soldier guns him down. I honestly was quite angry with him, and when we went back to camp after all this, we had a few words told him that I could have been in there. He said, why didn't you just go for him while he's on the floor? I said, I'm not Jimmy Savile. That's not my standard. All this fighting would then be resolved by someone's senile granddad who had been let out of the retirement home a little bit too early thinking that the war was over, but he had a megaphone and a tank and he made a point. After granddad's little rant, everyone put down their weapons and peace was granted upon Sicily. And after two years of fighting, Vito came home. Well, he wasn't really home. He was already home, but he went back home to then, to then come back home, to then come back home again to his other home which was New York, but he was in Sicily, which was his original home, but he'd come back to New York, his other home. And at the age of 20 years old, he was coming back a war hero, someone looking like he was in his mid-30s, a handsome, strapping young chap indeed. There I was, the same age as Vito, with about two chest hairs, and still occasionally wetting the bed. The first order of business getting home was meeting up with Joe and having a little bevy. And Joe, after these two years, was looking like someone who'd watched one season of Peaky Blinders, wanted to show me his brand new car, which was a useful car in the peak of the New York winter, as it had some nice heated seats. Although, they did get a little bit too hot at one point, as I started draining health rapidly. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just in the middle of a cutscene and I'm, and I'm on the verge of dying. What is going on? Hey, Joel, this heated seat is a little bit too heated, if you know what I mean. I'm going to have a heart attack in a minute. Turn this shit down. Catching up with Joe, he tells us that he's been quite successful at doing a little bit of business. I'm not really sure what his business was, but he kept on saying the word business, so it probably implies something very illegal. We had a few drinks and caught up over the last few years because that's what people do when they haven't seen each other for a while. I mean, like, seriously, why is this the protocol? Why does everyone always have to have alcohol? 
why can't we do a few drugs? Imagine how much better that would make every social situation. If that was the case, I might actually go outside a bit more. Just imagine going out and everybody being off their head on either pills or shrooms, including your 80 year old nan. I should seriously go on change.org and make a petition for this. Instead of it always being alcohol in social situations, why can't we just go to bars where there is just various drugs lined up across the bar and you order whatever one you want. You might even order a mixer, you know, a bit of meth, a bit of cocaine. I've heard that's good. Then again, the person that told me that also told me that Man United were a good football team. So I guess his opinion doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Ollie's at the wheel. I realised that Joe's heated seats weren't the cause of my health rapidly decreasing. I'd either been decommissioned from World War II due to injuries and they hadn't actually looked at the injuries first, or I had some underlying health condition that I wasn't quite aware of. And well, you know, it being America and all, the land of the free, I couldn't just nip down to the doctors, they would be charging me out of the arse for a quick checkup. And there may be other things coming out of my arse, I don't know what's wrong with me, I don't know what they might check. I'd heard about this cheap doctors that gave you checkups, around dark alleyways, but I wasn't really too sold on it, as we are in the 40s, and well, let's just say there was a lot of people in closets, and dark alleyways was the only way to get the sweet sensation. I ate some food to try and fix this underlying health issue, but it did not work, my health was still rapidly decreasing, but that was the last concern on Vito's mind. Vito hadn't been laid with a consenting woman in over two years, so he tried to put on the old war hero charm on someone that he knew back in the day, but alas, it was to no avail, as she was already married. It visibly upset Vito, but he had to collect himself and continue on his way back to see his mama and his sister. Say hello to your mother for me, will you? <laughs> He's so pissed she's married, just completely blanks her after that. Seeing my mum and my sister for the first time in two years only brought more sadness and disappointment, as Francesca, my sister, had prepared me a lovely meal, but it looked like absolute shit. I mean, I've been in the war for the last two years. I've been eating mostly unconsenting women. What is this, Francesca? Why have you prepared this? This looks absolutely fucking dreadful. This isn't the war hero welcome I was expecting in any way at all. As if this whack meal wasn't bad enough as well, we then had to pray to the Lord and thank him for this blessed meal. Even though it really wasn't a blessed meal, it was much more of a cursed meal. If I was in a white tank top right now, I'd give my sister a right hook right on the chin. I then decided to get some sleep to see if that would help my underlying health issue that was making me rapidly lose health. And after a few PTSD World War II dreams, I woke up in the morning to more disappointment. And the fact that my health was still as low as it could possibly be, I was literally on the verge of dying. Despite wanting to summon the Undertaker last night to give her a tombstone after that whack meal, my sister was then in some danger with this man here who was getting a little bit bit too close to comfort, I decided to take this upon myself and sort him out and show him how Vito Scaletta does business. Scaring a woman, huh? Come on, show me what you do. <laughs> And clearly knocking me out wasn't quite enough for Johnny here, as he decided to keep shadow boxing my spirit as I laid there on the floor, thinking to myself I was in World War II for two years and I didn't die there, I've just come back home, been one banged by Johnny, this is really it, this is how it ends. Hey Johnny, so hard, you gotta continue shadow boxing my spirit. Rising up like Tyson Fury, Vito Scaletta was ready for round two, and clearly Johnny wasn't. We went blow for blow for blow for blow, and this is starting to sound kind of homosexual. By blow for blow, I mean, I mean blowing fists. That still sounds a little bit weird. And he ran away quicker than someone who just found out that their flight was doing a quick pit stop in China. My sister ended up telling us that there was a loan shark that our father, just before he passed away, borrowed money off. And he kept on coming back for the money until he got it. So I had to get my hands on $2,000. And well, what do you know? It's a good thing. Last night, Joe was telling me about all that business. I might have to get myself involved in some of this business to get my hands on $2,000. On my way over to Joe's, I managed to get into a fight with some 60 year old man and once again proved that I am the definition of having a glass jaw. Arriving at Joe's, he had just the right answers for me. He gave me the classic business guy line of, I got just the right money, just the right people in just the right places at just the right time. We gotta go there now. Really by all that, all he means is he knows some shady people and he's the middleman. He's a bit like the Jeffrey Epstein of the 40s world, except, well, instead of procuring children, he was procuring cars for me to steal. Now, obviously before we went stealing cars, Joe wanted to test if I was a good driver, so he let me have a go in his car to see if I was more Paul Walker or the Stig. It's time for you to get your own fucking car. Apart from that, my test went absolutely swimmingly. I mean, I'm sure just one minor on my record is a lot less concerning to America in the 40s than the Japanese. Some Italian guy named Vito running over a few pedestrians isn't really that big of a worry for them. And it was time for Vito to get his very own car, once again proving that he was much more of a valuable 20-year-old to the world 
than I was. We proceed to steal a really nice car just for Vito, which is also one of my favourite weekend activities as well. Second only to finding people who have stan accounts on Twitter, buying a loaf of bread and then volleying it straight at their ribcage. I know I don't have to do this kind of service for the world, it's just what I do. I take responsibility as a YouTuber, I put the weight of my world on my shoulders and I do the Lord's work. Joe was nice enough to pay for every single upgrade we got on the car and I don't know whether he was just flexing that he had a little bit of cash in the pocket or whether he was trying to assert his male dominance on me, but either way, you know I was slapping a neon underglow on that bitch, lowering her by a few beans, getting some nitro and a turbo installed and then driving around drifting everywhere making really loud car noises so everyone knows that I have an extra small penis. I let the power of this baby go to my head a little bit, I was going 20 miles per hour, crashed into the side of a truck and ended up dying because I'm always in a critical condition. I'm literally just one beasting away from death at all times, it's really not a fun way to experience life. After the doctors revived me and put my neck back in place with a few stitches here and there, I was then gone out of that hospital quicker than you can say subscribe and like the video right now because I'm in America and that health insurance bill was going to be in the millions. Joe then introduces us to Mike, the kind of guy who I really got the vibe from that he's a shoulder to cry on, but then also a stern word when you need it. A man you can let your emotions free to, but then also a quick smack on the ass when you need it. The weird uncle that you never had, but always wanted. Joe also then become a man that I admire because he cares more about his coat than I care about living. God damn it, Mike. You put your grubby mitts on my fucking coat. I paid a fortune for this thing. All right, calm down or I'll stick them up your ass, you sissy. You know, dry cleaning costs these days. Christ. Plenty, and who knows if they can even get this filled out. You shut up. So now I have my route to that $2,000 to pay back that loan shark. All I had to do was go and steal a couple cars, and he gave us our first mission. Now, obviously, this mission is just meant to be something to introduce you to the game's mechanics and how the shooting works, how a little bit of fighting combat works, and how stealing cars actually works. But with a game-breaking bug like my health in-game declining faster than my mental health in real life, it was... Definitely not easy. Hey! Hey, what you doing, motherfucker? <laughs> Luckily for me, an epic gamer who has been playing video games for longer than Prince Charles has been fingering kids, I could... <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. This was 100% my second attempt and definitely didn't take me at least 10 times to do this. I was blasting through them all, killing everyone in my path, stealing the car and busting out those drawers quicker than a virgin smelling the Dolce and Cabana perfume of the school hottie as she walks past. No oh, wait, I've just realised what that sounds like. That sounds like I'm sexualising someone that's under it because school hottie and... Uh, no, age of consent in the UK is 16 and people that go to school can be 16, so that's fine, it's fine, it's perfectly legal. Despite all the shooting, all the fighting, all the punches thrown, all of the enemies after me, the police after me, and the fact that stubbing my toe would actually kill me, bringing the car back to Mike in a better condition than my wrists after many Sunday nights feeling depressed and my only friend being a razor. Mike was very, very impressed with the cleanliness of the car, seeming like he cared more about the inside and how someone had hoovered it compared to the outside and the couple of bullet holes that I had in it when I was getting shot. He was so impressed, in fact, that he gave me $400 for the car, which Joe took $100 of because he's a greedy little fat arsehole, aka the middleman. And we had a nice little cruise driving the car at a steady 10 miles per hour because, like I said, if I slightly tap something, I'm going to die. All the way back to Joe's to have a nice little celebration over a few drinks. And by some kind of miracle, maybe it was that saying grace before eating my wax sister's dinner earlier and the Lord was just showing me some justice for getting through that without throwing up. I ate half a sandwich from Joe's fridge, got a nice night's sleep, and all of a sudden, my health was fixed. Oh my god, I could actually play the game without being constantly on the verge of death and having this game-breaking bug. I could see things in full colour, in full detail. I could hear voices without it being muffled and my heartbeat constantly going in the background. It was the greatest feeling I've ever felt in a video game to commit through that and get through that on the other side and just show that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And that is going to be it for this episode of Mafia 2. If you guys did enjoy it, then be sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see more. If you enjoy this style of video, let me know as well in the comments say you want to see more or you want to see less. I don't know. It's only my second time doing this style of video, so I really need your guys' feedback. I need you to leave likes on the video. That also tells me I just get a general idea of what you guys think of this. It's helping me practice some things like my comedy as I want to do stand-up one day, and it's just a really, really nice way of making content. If you guys are new around here and you do enjoy the content, then be sure to subscribe. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it and you want to see more, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.